Welcome, everybody. This is Sally Arkell Bowles, and I am your success and mindset coach. And today I'm really excited because we get to talk about reigniting your desire. And so when I'm talking about that, I really am excited about what we're going to be able to share today and what we're going to be able to talk about as far as reigniting that desire that you have that's probably hidden right now. So first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Sally, and I am really excited because I've been doing a lot of work on this subject for the last year or so. And what I'm discovering is that people are really hesitant to really go after what they truly desire. And so from my past history, I have been in corporate leadership roles um, across North America, and I've really discovered a few things about life and about what we do to create the success or lack of success that we have in our life and how we work surrounding that. So I was so fortunate two years ago when I left my corporate career because I was looking for something different. I was probably like a lot of you where I was looking for an opportunity to really delve into what I was passionate about, to what would really fill my soul, and what would really create the desire that I would have to be able to serve others in a way that nobody else is. And so I went on a search. I went on a search for over about a year and just really looked at what was it that was missing from the corporate world on helping people achieve success that I wasn't able to discover in the corporate world. See, I'd been from corporate training development to working with entrepreneurs to leading large organizations as a director, um, to being a managing partner in an organization. And through all of those organizations, what I discovered was that there's billions of dollars annually in North America spent on teaching people the how to do their work and their jobs and to get success versus why they're getting that success. And the light bulb went off. That's when I knew that I had found the solution to what most people struggle with, not only in their careers, but also in their relationships, in their finances, in their lifestyle. And so I found Bob Proctor. And Bob Proctor is an expert in human potential and development and mindset. And when I found Bob, I knew I was in the right place at the right time. And I'm so fortunate and grateful that I get to be a consultant with Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher, who is the Proctor Gallagher Institute. And so in studying Bob's material, I have a lot of insights that I wanted to share with you today. And today I know when we're talking about reigniting your desires, that there's a big opportunity for us. And the one thing I know is that we hold ourselves back. Can you relate to that? Are you one of the people that is sitting in a job that you're not really happy in, you're going there day to day, nine to five, eight to four, whatever your shift is, but you're really not feeling like you're contributing what you wanted to contribute or that you have the ability to create within that position and you're held to a certain norm within that company. Or maybe you're just not finding that it's giving you what you truly want. You don't feel like your purpose is being achieved in this career. Or maybe you're struggling financially and you don't know how to get out of that struggle. And no matter what you're doing, nothing seems to change. You cut back on your expenses, it doesn't work. You don't, you pay your bills every month, but then you don't have a lifestyle. And so you might have had a family and now the expenses have gone up and cost of daycare these days is crazy, but you had to make a decision. Do I go back to work or do we sacrifice financially and have mom at home or dad at home with the kids so that we can have some income coming in, but save some money on that daycare? There's a lot of different situations out there right now, and I've just named two, but I want you to think about your relationships as a whole, your love relationships, your family relationships, your friend relationships. I want you to think about the type of people that you surround yourself with. And are they living their dream life? Are they going after their desires in life? Are they making a difference 
by doing what they do. Because when we're talking about desires, we're going to get a little deeper than just the surface. So when they were talking about desires, I want you to really think, what is a desire? So I looked up the definition. So let me just find my definition here. <laughs> so the definition of a desire is a strong feeling of wanting or, or wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Wishing for something to happen or a strong feeling of wanting to have something. So as you're coming into this session today, I want you to think about what is it that I desire? What is it that I would love to have in my life? What is it that holds me back from stepping in to the desires that I want to create in my life? What I found is that there's so many people with so many beautiful dreams but they keep them in their back pocket. They're not really working with them. They're not moving forward with it. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because there's a lot of fears that prevent us from moving forward in life. And some of those might be because of finances. Some of them might be because I don't believe in myself. Or maybe I've had a beautiful dream and I've told it to a few people and they've told me, Wow, what are you talking about? You're a dreamer. You'd never be able to do that. I don't see how that could happen. And there's lots of people like that in our life. And so we want to make sure that we're talking about your desires, what you truly want. And we got to shut out the noise. We truly have to shut out the noise of what other people are seeing and thinking because that's their mindset and their negative beliefs and the, the things that they do that is comfortable for them. And one thing I know about desire is when you have a burning desire, nothing's gonna stop you from doing it. And I'm sure you can think of some people in your life or that some celebrities that may have had a burning desire to change their life. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Bob Proctor because I know his story. And Bob was raised in Ontario in Canada, and he had a number of different jobs, but he grew up in a time when World War II was on, and the dads were all gone, and it was the mom at home looking after the children, trying to make ends meet. And so he only had about a month of high school as far as his education. And so can you imagine that? We couldn't even think of that at this stage of our um, world right now, that we would have an opportunity back then where we would only have a month's worth of education in high school. So he did a number of different jobs. He joined the Navy, he worked in the fire department. He did a number of different things. And then when he was in his early twenties, a gentleman approached him and suggested that he read this book. Oh, I'll just hold it up. Drink and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now it's a classic. It's one that's been around forever but it has some amazing concepts in there. And it has a whole chapter on desire if you're interested in having a look at it. But what he talks about is in the book is about the burning desire someone has to make a change in their life. You see, Bob was at a point in his life where he was more in debt than he had in his annual income as a firefighter. So back in the early 60s, he was making 4,000 a year and he was $6,000 in debt. So that sounds like nothing today, but back then that was a big deal. That's like us today and what we carry in our debts and our income. So what I want you to do is think about that. So Bob decided to do what this gentleman said and he started reading this book and over and over and over again. And he started taking it to heart and he would read a page until he fully understood it. And then he would move on to the next page. And he continued to do that until he passed away this last year. Every day he would read part of Think and Grow Rich. And he became very successful within a short period of time. As a matter of fact, within the first year, he decided to go and clean floors. Someone said there was a good business in being able to clean floors and in, in buildings, in industrial buildings. And so he said, well, I'm not proud. I'll go do that. And so he did that. And within his first year, he was making 15,000, which was more than the 
the um, fire chief at the fire department. And within a few years, he had businesses, I believe it was in um, Chicago, and he had one in Toronto, and then he also had one in England, London, England. And he built his business within five years to a million dollar business. This is back in the 1960s. That was a lot of money. And before he passed away, he created a business in human development and potential that was in every single country of the year. You may know him from The Secret. I, am, I knew him from The Secret years ago, but it wasn't until recently that I started to study his material in depth. And what I found was that Bob had that burning desire. He was not willing to accept anymore what his lot in life was, and he continued to learn. And so when we're talking about a burning desire, think of someone that you might know that might have had a struggle and became very successful. Maybe it was a single mom that you know. I know a single mom that's created a million dollar business through network marketing. And you know she had three children and so she needed to make an income, but she may, had a burning desire to grow that income. I know a number of people that have done the same thing over and over again. And so I want you to really think hard about what it is that would give you that burning desire to get to a goal. So when we're talking about goals, we want you to really think about what is your purpose? Because in order to really have a burning desire to achieve something, we need to understand what our purpose is. And so as you're looking at your purpose, what is it that really fills your heart with joy? What is it that really gives you a sense of accomplishment? Maybe there's a certain type of business that would make you just feel that you were giving back so much to society that there's no way you couldn't see yourself doing it. I don't know what that thing is for you or what that purpose is, but the purpose to me really needs to resonate internally with what you want to achieve in your life. And maybe you can say it's something that you would like to be known for. So if it's making a difference in people's lives, like I get to do every day, I get to mentor people to be able to create their futures to the desire that they want to and to the dreams that they've always dreamed of but never knew how to get there. That's what I get to do. And so now as I'm building my business and I'm growing across North America and globally one day soon, that I get to be able to really make a difference to people stepping into their greatness and having the success that they've always desired. And so what is your purpose? That's the best starting point. Now I wanna help you think about, I'm just gonna turn my page here. Um, when you're looking at your purpose, I want you to realize when we're looking at a goal we're looking at our purpose, we're looking at what we have a desire to create in our lives, I want you to think about this and realize that the worst that can happen is never very bad, yet the best that can happen is incredible. And that was a quote that I received, and I can't remember where it's from. I'm pretty sure it's from Think and Grow Rich, but I know that that one really resonated with me. So let me say it again. To realize that the worst that can happen is never very bad, yet the best that can happen is incredible. And that's when you step into your story and your life and your desire with ease. So as we're going forward, I want you to think about this. We have a lot of thoughts going on our, in our head every moment of every day. And oftentimes it's those past thoughts or those negative thoughts that we have that are habitual. So there may be things in our life that we've reacted the same way to those buttons that were pushed ever since we were little. Or there may be something that we had happened to us in the past and we keep reliving that story over and over and over again. What I want you to know is that as I'm studying and working with mindset is that we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. So I want you just to picture my head as a circle and in the middle is a line and the top part is my conscious mind, the bottom part is my subconscious mind. 
And so as we're thinking about that, I want to give you a simple concept. I call it, um, what do I call it? I call it just, if you look at a stick figure, okay, with a circle, with the line, and then a little circle down to a little body, two arms and two legs, a stick person, simple. And so as we're thinking about that, I want you to think about the conscious mind, because whenever we have a thought, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's serving us, whether it's not serving us, whatever we put into our conscious mind is automatically accepted by our con subconscious mind as fact. And so our body is going to go into a vibration that accepts that fact. So let's say I have a negative thought and that thought, thought is a bit of scarcity around money. As soon as I think about scarcity about money, I'm just gonna put a check mark in that subconscious mind that says, okay, we just want more scarcity of money. We can do that, so let's do that. And my body is going to react and that reaction is gonna cause an action to create more of the same and a reaction which is gonna give me a result. And so that result is gonna create more scarcity. It's pretty scary to think that that happens, but it's that control over our mind and the conscious thoughts that we have that can change that. So if I dismiss that worry and doubt and I replace it with an abundant mindset, I could say something like money flows easily to me every single day. Then my subconscious mind is going to say, okay, there's a flow of money. And so my body's going to react and it's going to attract a flow of money. And so the action reaction is really important to understand. So remember, whatever goes in the conscious mind is accepted. It cannot be rejected by the subconscious. And then it creates a vibration in our body. And so as we're talking about this stick figure, I want you to think about the thoughts that you have that are preventing you from getting to the life that you desire. So what are some of the things that are holding you back? Is it scarcity? Is it fear? Is it worry? Is it doubt? All of those things can prevent us from moving forward to create the purpose and the desire and the goals that we really want to achieve in our life. So now think about this. What are some of the things, I want you to take a minute and write them down. What are some of the fears that you have or doubts or worries or, or scarcity that comes into your life every single day? What are the, some of the thoughts that you have? Because when you take the time to think about those thoughts that you consistently have, it brings an awareness. And that awareness is what's going to allow you to start to reprogram those thoughts. So let's think about that and take a moment to just write those things down. Because I know when you go to bed at night, that's when our mind starts to quiet, but it also starts to bring up our, our worries, fears, and doubts. And then also in the morning, as soon as we wake up, the same thing can happen. Now there's a way to reprogram that. And I teach that in the courses that I offer from Proctor Gallagher. But I want you to really think about what is it that's preventing you from having the thoughts that you need to be able to move forward. We all have them and we can reprogram them and we can get rid of them, but it takes work and it takes time. But the first thing is to recognize those thoughts that we're having. Does that make sense? I know it does because we all have those thoughts. And so what I want you to do, once you've got those thoughts written down, I want you to take a pen and paper and I want you to write beside them what the opposite of that thought is okay so I want you to write down the opposite so as an example it might be scarcity well then abundance or prosperity is the opposite it might be worry well then it's confidence and belief right so think about the words that would go the opposite of the thoughts that you're thinking or those behaviors that are holding you back because we all live with paradigms and paradigms are just, uh, can, they're uh, repeatable habits that we've done over and over and over again. It might've been when we were younger that somebody told us we weren't good enough because we didn't get an A on our grade two test, right? That we needed to do better. 
And we've always judged ourselves based off of that result. And other times where, you know, someone might have told us, you know, at the dinner table, something about eating all of the food on your plate, even though you were so full and you didn't want it, right? Those types of behaviors happen. And one of the ones that's habitual is the type of food that we eat. Because if you were raised in a family, you probably ate the same foods that your grandparents ate and so on. So if through generations, those same types of food passed down. So think of the generational food or cultural food that you've been eating your whole life and it's become a habit. So as you go forward, I want you to think about what it is that you desire. So now that we know that our thoughts become things, I want us to really think about what things are we wanting to create? I la 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 love vision casting. <laughs> uh, I vision casted a number of different times. I continue to do it, not just a number of times, but I've set visions that have come true and into reality. And I never knew what timing they would come, but they came faster than I ever could have imagined. So here's an example of one, just so that you understand, because I wanna talk about the power of a vision and to be able to see in your mind's eye a goal that you have or a desire that you have. So about four or five years ago, I, I had the opportunity to meet a gal that wanted to hold a, a mastermind session that was a vision casting session. So we had eight gals show up and I volunteered to be the first guinea pig. And so it was about sharing our vision with the others and then everybody putting their own, their energy toward each other's vision. So the first month I had 10 minutes to share my vision. So I shared my vision with the group and then they all took a few minutes to put energy toward my vision and to see what they saw with my vision. And then likewise, each of them had an opportunity to share for five minutes. So my vision was to be speaking on an international stage. And I didn't know where it was. I didn't know what I would be speaking about. I didn't know anything like that. But as the vision increased month after month, I saw myself in a red dress on stage. I saw myself with one of my work colleagues on stage wearing red dresses and having some, such a fun time and, and just a blast. And pretty soon, within a couple of months, people started showing up in my life. An event planner showed up and she started sharing with me opportunities that there would be to speak. And she offered us an opportunity to speak. Then we also found a speech writer. And so there was all sorts of different things that showed up. But what was the most interesting was there was an opportunity to speak in our current industry that we were in. And it was coming up to the last minute to apply for it. And I saw an email and I said, hey, should we apply? So we scooted away right away because we had to make a quick little video. We did it on the phone and we put in this little introduction about who we were and what we were going to speak about. And then we said it and forget it. We sent it off and off it went to the organization. And that was in June. We didn't think anything of it. We just sort of laughed and, and went on with our day. And then in September, mid-September of that same year, one of the leaders I worked with comes into my office and says, would you like to speak at this event? I went crazy because I knew I had applied. And so I called my friend into my office that we had applied together. And we shouted with laughter because guess what? I had asked for speak on an international stage. It was an international stage. It was allowing us to speak at an, the biggest international event in the world for our organization of, for the financial services business insurance that we were in. And so that was like the most exciting thing ever. But what they said was, who are these girls and where did they come from? They then put us through a whole um, training program to speak on their stage. So we got free training out of every week. We had a, our speech writer that we were able to leverage. And then everybody said, where's your book? Have you written your book yet? We're like, book? What book? So we wrote a book. You can see it behind me. It's called Acting with Intention, The Secret to Redefining Your Success. And so Christine Sales and I wrote this book within a month and then got it off to the publisher so that we could have it. We sent it in at the beginning of January. We needed it by the beginning of, eight, of March. Got it to the publisher, got it published. And then we got to go to Chicago for rehearsals. So they sent us from Vancouver to Chicago. We went for the rehearsals. We got to meet with the head of the organization and a number of other speakers. It was just a magical time. 
and they actually flew us back to Vancouver via Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. <laughs> so you see a little bit of magic happens all the time. And then when we got to the actual event, we were so excited. We walked up to the Canadian uh, head of the organization and just to check in. And she said, I have some news for you. We said, what? You're the first Canadian women in the over 40 years of this organization to speak on this international stage. So don't underestimate that a vision, a dream in your mind can come to reality and so much bigger than we ever imagined. So that's just one example of what's happened to me with one of my visions. I've had many more that have come to fruition and you can call it the law of attraction. That's what I do. But by putting my vision out and then waiting for it to happen and taking some small actions, I didn't take massive actions, but small actions guided me to exactly where I was able to be. So I want you to understand that the power of the mind and the power of a vision to create your future is completely viable. So as we go forward to think about your desire, I want you to knock down all those barriers. I want you to think about what it is that you could create in your life and attract into your life through the law of attraction and actually all of the laws because they're, they're laws of the universe and they work for everybody all the time. And so I want you to think about the seeds that you're going to plant today to be able to start to grow your vision and your desire. Because without a burning desire to get to your goal, your goal is not going to be as easy to achieve. And when you have a burning desire, nothing's going to take you off your path. You're not going to be taken off your path by um, circumstance. You're not going to be taken off your path because you had a little dip in business or dip in the momentum that you're carrying because you're going to be able to plan to make sure that you have a way to get through those things. So when you're thinking about your burning desire, I really want you to open up, open up wide what it is that you could invite into your life. Because I know I've done it a number of times. I've attracted homes in the community I wanted to be in. I've attracted that speaking engagement. I've attracted jobs. I've attracted so many different things in my life that it's just incredible what I've been able to accomplish. And I want you to have some of that as well. And when I tell you when you accomplish those goals, or when that magic starts, I call it magic, when that magic starts to happen, it's because my mind and my conscious mind fed my subconscious, which motivated me to do the actions I needed to do to get the results I wanted to do. So I want to challenge you to be able to do the same. Now, some of you might think, okay, I need clearer steps, Sally. <laughs> what do I need to do to get to my goals? What do I need to do to create this desire? So I'm going to go through six steps that you can use to get to your desire. And in this example, I'm just going to use money as an example, because a lot of us want to have more prosperity or might have a certain income goal. So I'm going to use that, but you can place that money with anything else, okay? So here are the six steps that you can take to get you closer to understanding and to creating into reality your desire. So the first one is to fix in your mind, like I said, I'm talking about money, the exact amount of money that you desire and be very specific. So whatever it is that you're wanting to do, be very specific on what you want to achieve. So for me, on that last one, I wanted to be an international speaker. I wanted to be on an international stage. Okay? It wasn't just being speaking at a local group or doing a freebie here or there. It was speaking on an international stage. So I was very specific on what I was looking for, and I had no idea where it was going to come from. Okay, so that's an example of that finding that exact thing, that exact item that you want or that exact amount of money that you want and you got to fix that and be very very specific okay the second step is to determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire 
or speaking on stage? What is it that you wanted to do in exchange for that desire that you have? So in my business today, I love to be able to serve people by giving them the tools they need to have success in every area of their lives. And that just fills my bucket, right? And so I have a burning desire to help as many people as I can. And so I have a specific amount of people each year that I want to be able to impact. And so that is my, my burning desire is to make sure that I hit that goal. And that's what I'm going to give in return for hitting that goal. Okay. The third one is establish a specific definite date that you intend to possess what the money you want or the goal that you've set. So for me, I have an annual goal and I also make quarterly goals because the quarterly goal is gonna lead me to my full goal. So I always have specific goals to achieve by a certain time each year. And so you can create whatever that definite date is. And sometimes we have to change them but don't feel bad about changing them because if you have a date that you're running towards and you get so close and you miss it by a little bit, it's okay, just change the date a bit because sometimes we need to adjust based off of what's going on, okay? We don't wanna let circumstance take us over, but sometimes the dates need to be adjusted and that's okay. Then the fourth step is to create a plan, a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once. Don't wait. Don't wait. You can start taking steps now to get to where your desire is before you leave that job, before you have money in the bank. There's a million different things that we can do before all those things are in place that are going to lead us to what our burning desire is. Okay, take those steps today. Don't wait. There's no, no honor in waiting, right? That's just procrastination. And that's another paradigm that we have. And I, I tell you, I've been guilty of, of that paradigm for sure in procrastinating on getting things done. The fifth thing is to write out a clear, concise statement of the amount of money or the thing that you intend to acquire and name the time limit for its acquisition. This is a longer one. State what you intend to give in return for the money and describe clearly the plan through which you intend to accumulate it. So that's going to sort of be your... I would say sort of what you'd have as an overview for your business plan. That's what I would maybe call it today, but I don't want it to be a business plan. I want it to be a statement that you can easily read and to internalize so that you're really clear on what it is that you're after and what you desire. And then the sixth one is to read your written statement aloud two times a day, once before bed and again, first thing in the morning. And as you read it, and see it, I want you to believe that you are already in possession of either the money that it was that we talked about earlier or the dream that you've created. You need to see yourself as if it's already happened, as if it's today that you're there. Because when you start to see yourself in possession of what you've already dreamed of, what you already have a desire for, it just brings it forward so much faster. Okay, so you've got the six steps. First one is the fixing your mind, the what you desire and be specific. The second one is to determine exactly what you intend to give in return for that money as an example. The third one is to establish a definite date when you intend to have this in your possession. The fourth is to create a definite plan that you have in place to create and carry out your desire. And don't forget, begin at once. The fifth one is to clearly write out a clear, concise statement of what it is that you want to achieve, how you're going to achieve it, and what time you're going to achieve it by. And the sixth one, which is probably the most critical, is once you've got that down, I want you to read that statement out loud to yourself before bed at night and first thing in the morning with feeling, not just blah, 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 but I want you to put the feeling in it as if it's already happened and the feeling that you're going to have. That is the key. You want to bring that feeling into it because the feeling is what the energy is going to translate. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so there is a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. 
And so I have a quote that says, there's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. No one is ready for a thing until she believes she can acquire it. This state of mind must be belief, not mere hope or wish. Open-mindedness is essential for belief. Closed minds do not inspire faith, courage, and belief. Okay, so that's a really strong quote as well. So now that you've got your desire, you figured out what part of your desire is, or you at least got your, your thoughts going as to what you would really love to do. Don't let your foot off the gas. Okay, do whatever it takes to get a bigger belief and do whatever it takes to improve the flow. And by the flow, I mean the flow of your energy. Because I find when I feel like I'm forcing some things to do, like I have my to-do list, and then I have, I, I actually create now, I get to do. And when I do my get to do list, it's so much different than a to-do. To-do is a command, I get to, gives me a whole different feeling. But then I limit how many things are on my get to list. Because I can only do, I would say between three to six things well during the day. So I don't want you to have a, I get to list of 15, 20 things because it distracts you. You want to keep your list smaller and really focused. And then with the other thing that I do is I make sure before I do any of those activities that I put the right energy toward it. And so because of that, I want you to really think about where is your energy and how is your energy feeling? Because when you're having your energy, right? When you're having your emotion going into it, you want to have a great vibration going forward because the more our thoughts go in to our head with a positive vibration and a belief that we're doing it, then it's going to translate. If it goes in with any worry, doubt, or, or fear, it's going to create lack. Okay. So you really want to think about that before you go into anything. So as an example, before I came into this session today, I took a few minutes just to close my eyes and really think about the energy I wanted to bring forward into this to work with each of you and to serve you and to give you the best that I could give you today because that's the energy I want to go forward with that is the energy I choose to go forward with and I want to be able to attract and I want to be able to support and I want to be able to give back and part of my desire is to do that in everything that I do each day and so I want you to be able to feel that. And so I want you to think about what is it that you're going to be bringing forward every day in your get to list. So I want you to also think about how you want your work to be. That sounds kind of weird. What do you mean how I want my work to be? I want you to really think about everything that you're doing, every single thing that you're working on, and I want you to make it the way you want it to be. So I don't, I'm i human, I'm like you, and I'll be getting busy on something and I'll start getting frustrated, especially when it comes to things like technology and learning all the different platforms and what I need to do to record, et cetera, et cetera. And I can get myself frustrated by it. So when I stop, when I recognize that frustration, step back and say, okay, this doesn't need to be hard. This is easy. Just take some time and make it easy. And the flow starts to come back in and it becomes easy. And it's when I'm usually rushing or pushing to get something done that takes me out of the energy I need to be in to create that ease that I choose to have in my life. I can get more done with ease than I can ever get done with push or pressure. So I want you to think about what is it that you want to be as you're working through with your desires. Because I never want you to give up on your desire. Do you wanna give up on your desire? Your true desire? I know you all have it inside of you. It's just a matter of you believing and having the faith that you have a desire that's worth pursuing. So a strong desire makes mega businesses. Think about that. A strong desire makes mega businesses. 
A strong desire doesn't come from everything working out exactly as planned. Because what happens is it's going to take fine tuning. It's going to take change. It's going to take resetting yourself. It's going to take going through the motions of, oh, well, that worked this well. This one didn't work as well. What can I do to tweak it to get the results that I'm really looking for or to make it a little bit better? And so you're always going to have on your journey to be able to have that strong desire and to be able to make it come into fruition. It is going to be a journey just like anything else, but you're going to choose to make it the way you choose to make it instead of accepting circumstance. Okay. You're the one that will be depriving yourself of your new reality if you choose not to make it what you want it to be. Make sense? So let's talk about our clarity of desire and deliberate intentionality because part of my book is really about intention. Well, it is about intention. <laughs> and intentionality is making a commitment to yourself and doing things in a certain way. And so you want to focus on what it is that you would need to do each day to create the desires that you want in your life. What are the intentional activities that you would need to do that there's no exception to doing them because those activities are gonna get you to where your desired goal is, where your desired lifestyle is, where your desired wealth and prosperity is. So you want to make sure you're doing everything with intention. We're going to turn our vibrations of our thoughts into things. And that's fun. <laughs> that's so much fun when you're able to turn your thoughts into things. And you're going to give yourself undivided attention to what it is that your desire and the rest will fill in. Okay, so what it is that you desire and the rest is going to fill in. Because if you focus on the thoughts that you need, to be able to desire what it is that you want, you've got that plan in place, it's all going to start to fall into place because you're going to start attracting the things that are aligned with your desire, okay? So the perception becomes your now reality. And that's how you start the manifestation. So here's a couple of things I want you to be careful of. I don't want you to be blaming everyone else for your reality because nobody else is responsible for your vibration. It's really hard when you're around people that are negative or don't have the same belief or don't believe in you to take on their energy, to take on their belief. When you have a strong desire, you're gonna be able to shut those things out. And it might be hard sometimes, but you need to keep it to yourself as long as you need to and to the people that need to know what you're doing, because there will always be people that are not aligned with what you're able to do or what your true desires are, because they don't live in your body. They're not in your mind. They're not your thoughts. They don't see the vision that you see. And so you want to be selective about who you're sharing your desires with, because you want to make sure you're guarding yourself with the energy that you need to have that success and to get to where your desire is. And so when you know what you don't want, you really will understand and know what you do want. So I want you to think of it this way. There's things in your life right now that you wish were not the way they are. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe it's a parental relationship that you have. Maybe it's where you're living. Maybe it's your job. There's a lot of different things that we're not really happy with what we, where we are today. So when we think about those, like I said before, think about what is what you really desire. What is it you desire for that relationship? What is it that you desire for your, your home? What is it you desire for your work? What is it? And make a big list. Put down what where it currently is today and then put down what you want to create, okay? Then we're gonna get rid of all those things that are today because they're not gonna serve us if we spend our time there. We've got to be able to give up that negative energy, those negative thoughts, and just focus on what we want to create, even though we still may be in the moment, 
of understanding that our pocketbook or our, our checkbook is not as big as it used to be or isn't as big today because I've made a decision I'm going after a different desire. But your desire is what's going to feed you to get to where you want to be. So as we turn our thoughts into things, that's where the fun is. Remember, that's where the fun is. Because when you start, like when I started to see that I could attract an international stage and the largest stage in our company, our president of our company was on the board. Everybody was supporting us. They all jumped in to support us as we move forward in this goal. So, so many people were showing up and presenting us as these international speakers, the first women in Canada to ever speak on stage. And we opened up a lot of doors that way. So I want you to think about where's the fun, where's the joy on this journey and the evolution that you've been creating in your mind, the evolution in your mind, that's what it's intended to do. We want to create an evolution in your mind so that you can have the success that you've always dreamed of. So are you willing to let go of your past beliefs? Are you willing to let go of where you are today to move to tomorrow, to create a better tomorrow in your work, in your life? Maybe you want to travel the world or maybe you want to be a nomad where you're able to take your family on the road and explore the world while you're working. That was one of my goals was to be able to have an opportunity that I could work from anywhere in the world that I chose to be because my husband used to travel all over the world for work and I'd be at home alone. And my goal when I left my corporate career was to be able to do just that. And now I can. And now I found the opportunity and now I've created it. And I tell you, it is certainly freeing to be able to do that in my life, to know I can be anywhere I choose to be at any time, and I can still generate my income, I can still work with my clients, I can still do my work, but I can have the freedom to be anywhere in the world that I choose. So are you willing to continue to face failure or sadness or defeat or accept that your future is today what it will always be? Or are you willing to step into what's next for you? So I want you to think about that and release the past now and step into that amazing future that's waiting for you. Because I've done it over and over again, where I've been able to create my future based off my vision, my thoughts, and my desire to really get to that next level in my life, my career, my relationships. And I want you to have the same. So my call to you is if you really want to be able to step into your greatness, connect with me. I have my website. I'll put the link below. I do a discovery call so you can learn a little bit more about what I do. But I have this amazing program that I'm going to be launching as we go into September of 2022. And I am so excited to be able to offer you the opportunity to come forward and learn more about what it is that can help propel you forward in every area of your life. So let's connect, let's have a chat because I know that you can create more in your life and you can reignite that desire to get to where you've always dreamed you could be. And it's beautiful and it's big and it is so much fun. The journey on the way to those goals is so filled with excitement and joy and it's the journey that makes the biggest difference to getting you to where you truly want to be so i thank you for your time and remind you i'm sally arkell bowles and i'm so excited that i got to share this with you today have a great day life is a story make yours a bestseller